Okay, that is dealt with. You don't want to get plus five revolt risk from dog in the middle of a, an E4 run. <clears throat> anyway, declining power of the boyars. Oh, so sad for them. Yeah, we're 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 definitely gonna be glad to have that admin focus with how uh, how much coring we're doing early on. There we go. Now our overextension at least isn't as absurd. What's our corruption at? Uh, all right, bourgeoisie request privileges. Can lose admin or diplo. We're already in the hole on diplo, so we should probably grant them the privileges. <laughs> Our uh, good old uh, Vasily Rurikovich is not the most diplomatic of the Rurikovich dynasty. Um, hell, I might even abdicate him just to get the extra monarch power as soon as we're able to. I think he has to be 40. Or no, his age doesn't matter. The heir just needs to be 15. Tula is now part of our patrimony. Pronsk is now part of our patrimony. Let's see. Well advised. Possible advisors number one. Well, I hope he's well advised in diplomacy because he's not very good at it himself. All right, there we go. Making cores. By the way, we could probably build up our army a little more now. Um, we have four additional points of force limit. Uh, what I'd kind of like to do is like a two to three ratio, maybe. So let's say, I guess I'm kind of over that already. I don't want to quite go 50-50 on it. So let's, let's build two more of each, that'll be 2016, yeah, that'll be that'll be fine. Cavalry is very good in the early game, especially when you have a loyal Cossacks estate. Corruption is still growing. Possible rebel uprising, Novgorodian separatists. Oh. <laughs> Because I didn't actually station anyone in Novgorod. That's part of the problem. So since they are the most imminent threat, I think I'll put my reserves here. Fort maintenance is costing us a lot of money. Um, where are our forts? We've got one here. We've got one here. We've got one here. Those are all useful forts. Um, we shouldn't be... Hmm. What else is costing us money? States, army... And, uh... Leading out corruption. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Last jousting tournament. Yeah, let's do it. Forward to glory. <clears throat> By the way, what is our what does our rival situation look like? Because I know we eclipsed someone. Yeah, let's make Kazan a rival. Humiliate rival against Kazan. And there's the separatists. And holy shit. They did that they did that much damage to us in like the first two days of the battle. Um Assassination of a Noble. Yeah, we can take a legitimacy hit. Okay, so we need to really get on top of this. That was crazy. That was like a slaughter. Wow! We lost again! Well, at least they're sieging a fort, so they're not going to get much in the way of reinforcement. 
Good general. Let's just keep rotating you to different stacks. Okay. And we have crushed the Novgorodian rebels with our spears, our pointy spears. Um, Tengri zealots want to convert perm. Interesting. Do they have a lot of Tengri? They have one Tengri province. You guys can't keep a handle on that shit? Move your armies right over there. We'll reduce your revolt risk. You're welcome. Shouldn't need to teach you this basic shit. My idiot vassals. You come home. Gained core province. Okay, cool. So we finished our mission. Manpower reserves need to recover. I agree. E4 mission granting logic. The Renaissance. Where did it spawn? The Renaissance has spawned, of course, in far away from us. So we're going to have to wait a while. Have to wait a while to get a piece of that renaissance. And now we're paying interest. Hopefully once our armies recover we'll be at a net gain again. When do we get to use our Russia buttons? That's what I want to know. Because this minus 10... Uh, Sedebnik thing, minus 10 autonomy in all provinces is going to be really helpful. Really, really helpful. Norway's building spy network, good for them. And we have a possible rebel uprising, great horde separatists. And Yelets. Yeah, let's not have a rebellion today. All right. Well, and we crushed it immediately. Fantastic. So you guys can go back to Riazan. You guys can go back to the capital. Yeah, the game really needs to pause when a when a revolt happens. Non enforcement of ordinances. Uh, yeah, we'll give them autonomy. We need that admin power for other stuff. Like technology and like getting the uh, large city objective for the Age of Discovery. By the way, controlling centers of trade. If we get Neva from Novgorod, and let's see, I don't want to really fight Poland. I guess we should try to get that the White Sea trade node from them too. So yeah, we could get both of those required for that objective in one war if we wanted to. And humiliate rival. We should do that at some point. Reduce the independence of the church. The church is a powerful institution, but more important, a wealthy one. If we were to reign in the church and make it part of the state, we would also bring in income for taxation. On the other hand, we'd also sap its authority in the eyes of the masses. Um... Yeah, let's let's protect their independence. Since we're going to be the defenders of the Orthodox faith, more or less, we should uh, do what we can to to preserve their authority. Oh, and of course, oh, I guess it does pause the game. I'm just clicking through pop-ups so fast that I don't ever react to it in time. Tver have claimed some stuff of ours. Put down the rebellion. And I think we should be done with rebellions for now. Let's see. Kasim Separatists in Kasimov. Which is... I don't even know where that is, to be honest. <laughs> hey, we can almost start uh, annexing vassals here. Let's see, influence, annex vassal, November 11th of next year. We can start annexing vassals. Um, 
So let's see, what's going to be 17 development? Rostov has 8 development. Pskov has 20 development. Perm has 26. Villazero has 12. So we should definitely do Perm first. That'll also give us access to Siberia once we form Russia and get Russian ideas and can start using the Siberian frontier mechanics. We still rooting out corruption? I guess so. Austria has declared war on Milan. All right, June, July. Uh, yeah, we'll support the merchants. August, September, let's pull this guy home. So he can start the process. October, November. There we go, Annex Vassal. And that's going to eat all of our Diplo power for a long time. Uh, oh, one of our generals died. Hopefully, oh, it was the good one. Damn it. Let's see. Our air is now just. That's very good. This annexation is going pretty quick. Should be done in three years. Shared interest. It's no secret that both Grand Knyaz Vasily II, Temni, and the Queen Maria have a way with words and thus with people. They can both make a stranger feel perfectly at ease in their presence and somehow always manage to be the one making the closing argument in a discussion. Although they're perhaps not entirely equal in charm and using different personal strengths, they have grown to enjoy attending social events together, often seen smiling smugly at one another from a distance. What is for certain is that the Grand Principality is better off since their union. Excellent. Did I actually gain a Diplo point? No. That would have been nice. Diplomat from Sweden. Oh yeah, we should start working on alliances. Kazan is no longer a valid rival. Once we get a vassal slot free... Oh, we're actually over our limit right now. Because of Odiev. Um, that's alright. So once we annex a couple vassals, we'll start looking for allies. Um, let's see here. Uh, so we need a new rival. I'm sorry, we're not going to do Poland. Yeah, we, we don't want to fight the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. We did get the power projection for eclipsing them, though, so that's good. Skov is getting uppity now. Reduce the independence of the church. We're going to protect their independence, actually. Actually, we're going to protect their independence. Uh, Truce with Odeyev has ended, so they could rebel now if they wanted to. Um... Do we have a renaissance in any of our provinces yet? Once we do, I might, um... Oh, fine. That's also why I'm holding off investing in technology right now, is because I would like to get the renaissance first. It ends up being a better idea most of the time. So we'll wait till we cap out. Probably, and then I'll start developing prop Muscovy. Nobles demand increased pensions. Kings had to keep their nobles in line through many methods. One of the most common was cold hard cash. Nobles would demand increased pensions in exchange for relinquishing certain rights to kings. Um, national tax modifier minus 10 nationwide. No, we're not going to do that. Oh, shit. All right. We immediately have a peasant revolt. Uh, so we need to boost our stability. We're gonna put it all the way up to two. 
Um, and then we need to, what else, what else did I need to look at? Peasant's War. Um, currently in a disaster, manpower levels at least 50%. Okay, so we just need to be careful that we don't get the Peasant's War. <laughs> Alright, so is it not progressing? Plus zero. Okay, because we have our high stability. Dever is claiming shit. Working on that annexation. Oh! Their liberty desire went up. So we're not making any progress right now. Perm... Um, I'll placate the local rulers. There we go. Just until our army builds back up. I think that's the main reason they're feeling disloyal. There we go. This is, this is exactly what happened that time that I had too many vassals. <laughs> Except I had like two more than this, so it was impossible to get any of them under 50% for annexation. Okay, now it's going to finish in 1459. That's not too bad. Just wish it would give me a pop-up if like, for any reason, if the progress is halted. It's also partially from uh, if, if we have lower diplo tech than any of our vassals, they get liberty desire increase for every level of diplo tech we're behind. Assassin assassination of a noble. Noble families were the bulwarks of power during these times. Assassination of a powerful house leader was seen as a critical blow to those families' fortunes. As time marches on, some noble houses might see their fortunes rise, while others could lose all their power. The resulting envy would often result in rivalries and even murders. Um, yeah, we'll take the legitimacy hit. Fuckers. Corruption is gone and we're still losing money hand over fist. This is largely from army maintenance, which is mostly from reinforcement. Also interest from that loan. State maintenance. We're just going to need to take economic ideas as our first idea group. How far are we... Yeah, I don't want that institution penalty. The church is a large landowner, and this has brought a great deal of wealth to the church. The non-possessors claim that the church is being corrupted by this great wealth. Their opponents argue that the church needs this wealth to carry out its holy mission. The key thing is the church isn't really a big taxpayer. If it was forced to give its land away, it would move into the hands of the people we can tax. The downside is the church would have less wealth to perform its mission. How much inflation do we have? I don't think that's worth half a point of inflation to lose five patriarch authority. Cannon fodder. It appears our country is getting rather empty and lacking a very important resource. Cannon fodder. Fear not. While we may lack this resource, one of our subjects have plenty of fresh meat for the battlefield. Should we force their servitude, they would be less than pleased, but such is the way of things. Odiev gains Liberty Desire. They're already almost at a hundred. Uh, yeah, we need the manpower. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> Send us your men. Send them to die. That's all we ask of you. Livonian Order's declared war on Novgorod again. We'll get out of debt. We just need to... We're going to be running a deficit for a while, I think, until we can get uh, get some things in order. Integrating Perm. Annex Subjects. We get five prestige from that. Are we over our force limit? Yes, we are. What do they have? Two of these guys. Let's disband them. Send these guys to the capital. Alright. 